Hi and welcome to this episode of Topic Busters from OnMaths. Today we're looking at inequalities. I think they're greater than you may think. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to Topic Busters from OnMath. So today we're looking at inequalities. That is that, or that, or that with a line underneath it. Make sure you're comfortable with what they actually mean because they can start to be a little bit creative with the questions they might ask you. We're going to be looking at inequalities on a number line, how to show that, how to interpret it, how do you solve inequalities. Key word for today is the word integer. Now, integer, all it means is whole number. So if I tell you, name me an integer between 1 and 3, then you would say, well, 2. But if I didn't say integer, then there's infinite amount of numbers you could say between 1 and 3, like 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1 1 1.73, 1 1.70001. Okay? So if they don't say integer, then there's there's not a finite amount. You'd, you'd spend the rest of the exam writing down all the possible numbers. Well, there's infinite, so you would spend your entire life doing it. So, really important that you understand the terminology of what the question's asking for. Now, it's really common to mix this up, the less than or whichever angle you're looking at it from, with that. That line underneath it means it can be equal to the number as well. I hope you enjoy the questions. Thank you very much. Okay, so a simple true or false question to start off. The important thing to realise in this question is what this means. Now there's a few different ways of remembering which this means because it's either going to be smaller than or greater than. Some teachers say that the smaller side is the smaller number and the bigger side is the bigger number. And some teachers like to call it a crocodile and the crocodile always eats the bigger number. So this reads 3 is smaller than 5, so therefore that is true. The next one says 10 is greater than minus 3. That is also true. 10 is bigger than minus 3. And the last one says 4 is greater than or equal to 4. So that is also true. So that bottom bit, the, one, the bit at the bottom, that line there, means it can be equal to it as well. Okay, have a go. Okay, so the first one says 5 is bigger than 8. That is clearly not the case. Now, the next one's quite tricky because we know that 2 is less than 5, but actually minus 2 is a bigger number than minus 5. If you think about it, minus 2 is closer to 0, so it's bigger. So that is also false. And the last one says 10 is greater than or equal to 12. Well, 10 is not greater than 12, and 10 is not equal to 12. So that is also false. OK, so this question is asking us to show the inequality on a number line. So the first one says that x is greater than 3. So I'm going to do a hollow circle at 3. And I'm going to show an arrow that goes greater than it. Now, that goes on forever, because any number that's greater than 3, x could be. So I just show an arrow to show it goes on forever. The next question says x is less than or equal to 4. So it's going to be a dot at 4. And I'm going to go this time the other way, left. But it can be 4, so I fill in the dot, because it can be 4 as well. Now, this last question, the first step is you put the dots at the 2 and the 5. So x can be anywhere between those two. So I join up these dots because it can be anywhere between those two. But it can be 2. But it can't be 5. Because it says it has to be less than 5 but can't equal 5. OK, have a go. OK, so for this first one, x is less than 3. So the dot goes at 3, and it's anywhere less than that. And it's a hollow dot because it can't equal 3. 
Right, next one, x is greater than or equal to 2. So I put a dot at 2. The arrow goes to the right because it's greater than it. But I need to fill in that dot because it can equal 2. OK, last one, I'm going to put a dot at 1 and 4. And x can be anywhere between those two. But it can equal 4, so I need to fill in that dot. But it can't equal 1, so that stays hollow. OK. So next it asks us to write inequalities from the number line. So it's just working the other way. So I always start off with x. And I think, well, where is x compared to the number? Well, x is always going to be greater than the number. And that number is 2. So the number I write down is just basically what I read off the, where the dot is on the, on the uh, number line. Now, next question I ask, can it be equal to the number? Well, it's a filled in dot, so yes. So it's x is greater than or equal to 2. Now the next one, I know I need to put the smaller number, then x, then the bigger number. So 1 goes down first, then x, and then the bigger number, 4. So x is going to be greater than 1, and 4 is going to be greater than 4. So x is not going to be as big as 4. It's just a little tail on there. Now, last question I asked myself is, can it be equal to 1? Well, the answer is no, so it stays as it is. Can it be equal to 4? Yeah, it's a filled in dot, so I put a little line there. That's it. Now, it's really common with inequalities for you to be asked, write down the integers, okay, or write down all the integer values. Integers just mean whole numbers. So if I had to write down every number between 1 and 4, it would take me for the rest of time because there are infinite amount of numbers between 1 and 4. However, the whole numbers quite easy. So I'm going to start off with 1. Well, it can't equal 1, so I'm going to miss that out. So 2, 3. Now, can it be 4? Well, it says that it can be equal to 4, so yes. But it can't be any more. Okay, have a go. Okay, so for this first one, it's going to be x is less than 4. It's hollow, so it's not going to be equal to it. This next one's going to have a 3, then an x, and then a 6. So uh, x is going to be greater than 3, but not as big as 6. And it can be equal to 3, but it can't be equal to 6. So the numbers are going to be 3, 4, and 5, but not 6. OK, now we're asked to solve, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but if you understand how to solve linear equations, it's much the same process. Now, I'm going to go through how I do this, but if you do this in a slightly different way, that's absolutely fine. So, write down the inequality, and I always write, just draw lines down. OK, now we've got a 3x on the left-hand side, and we just want an x. Now, to get from 3x to x, we need to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So it's x is greater than 5. Now, because it's so similar to when you've got equations with equal signs, students often write the answer x equals 5. Now, recently, some of the exams have absolutely penalised this, and one of the recent exams gave 0 for x equals 5, even though you went through the steps correctly. So make sure whatever inequalities in the question is in your answer. OK, so the next question is 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 11. So same process, I put the lines going down. And so the first thing I need to do is get rid of that plus 5. So I take away 5 both sides. So we're left with 2x is less than or equal to, and it's 11 take away 5, which is 6. Then I need to get rid of that times 2, and I do that by dividing both sides by 2. So I've got x is less than or equal to 3. OK, last one. Now, um, there's two ways of doing this one. I'm going to show you both ways. The first one, so let's do 11 take away 2x is greater than 19. So I'm going to take away 11 first of all from both sides. So we've got minus 2x 
is greater than and that's going to be 8. Now I want to divide by minus 2 both sides to get rid of that minus 2. So I'm left with x and 8 divided by minus 2. Now that's going to be minus 4 which is fine. However there's a gotcha here. Whenever you divide or times by a negative one of the rules, in fact the only rule that's different to an equation is you must flip the sign. A greater than becomes a less than. Okay, So whenever you times or divide by a negative you have to flip the sign around. That's the only special case with this. Now I'm going to do this question again but I'm going to show you a trick that means you can get out of this problem. So I'm doing the same question. This time I'm going to add the 2x both sides and that will make it positive. So it's going to be 11 is greater than and it's just 19 plus 2x. Then I can subtract that 19 both sides and so 11 take away 19 is going to be minus 8. And then I can divide by 2 both sides. Just extend my line slightly. And so that's going to be minus 4 is greater than x. So on the left hand side I've got x is less than minus 4. On the right hand side I've got minus 4 is greater than x. They mean the same thing. So it might be easier to add the negative x both sides and make it positive that way. Okay, have a go. Okay, so for this first one we want to do 4x is less than 24 and all we need to do is divide both sides by 4. So we have x is less than 24 divided by 4 is 6, because 6 times 4 is 24. Okay, for this next one, 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 10. Put my lines down. So we're going to add 5 both sides to get rid of that minus 5. So we've got 3x is greater than or equal to 15. And then we want to divide 3 both sides. So we have x is greater than or equal to 15 divided by 3 is 5. OK, for this last one I'm going to do the second method. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 3x both sides. So I'm going to add 3x both sides. So it becomes 10 is greater than 1 plus 3x. Then I just need to subtract that 1. So it's 9 is greater than 3x. Then simply divide by 3. So I've got 3 is greater than x. I could write that as x is less than 3 as well. It means the same thing. You'd get a mark either way unless it's specified that you had to put the x first. OK, so this question asks us to write down all the integers that satisfy the inequality. So integers just mean whole numbers. So reading the first one, x is between minus 2 and 5. Now it's not equal to minus 2, so I'm going to start off with minus 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I've got to ask myself, can it be equal to 5? Well it has the little line underneath the inequality, so yes. So I need to have the 5 as well. Students often go for minus 2 or don't go for 5. Okay, So if it has the little line underneath it, go for that number. If it doesn't have the little line underneath it, miss that number out. OK, with this next question, we have to solve it first. So we have to get x on its own. At the moment, there's a 5x. So I'm going to write it down. Now, there's not just one set of lines this time. There are two. So there's three parts of this inequality. Now, to get our x on its own, I need to divide by 5. But I've got to do everything divided by 5. So minus 10 divided by 5 is minus 2. 
then 5x divided by 5 is x, which is the whole point of dividing it by 5, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So I've solved it, now I need to answer the question. So it's going to be uh, minus 2, because it can be equal to that, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, but not 3, because it can't be equal to 3. Okay, this last one's a um, little bit tricky. It's the same principle as the previous question, but there's a couple of things we've got to do. So I'm going to put my lines in. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is take away 2 on each of the sides. So minus 1 take away 2 is minus 3. 3x three take away 3x plus 2 take away 2 is just going to be 3x. And 11 take away 2 is 9. Then I need to divide by 3 to get rid of the 3 and the 3x. So it's going to be minus 1. It's going to be x. And it's going to be 3. So the numbers are, let's just check this, 0, 1, and 2. It can't be equal to minus 1 or it can't be equal to 3. Okay, have a go. Okay, for the first one, it can be equal to minus 2. It's going to be minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. It can't be equal to 4. Okay, so we've got to solve this first. So I'm going to divide each of the sides by 4 to get rid of that 4 in the 4x. Okay, so that's going to be minus 2x and 3. So the numbers are going to be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. It can't equal to 3 because there's no line underneath it. And the last one. Okay, so let's get those lines in. Okay, so we've got 3x minus 1, so we've got a plus 1 first on each of the sides. So that's going to be minus 12. 3x and 3. And we've got to divide by 3 each of the sides to get rid of the 3 and the 3x. So that's going to be minus 4x. One. So the numbers it's going to be are minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and 0. It can't equal minus 4, and it can't equal 1. Well, I hope you found that useful. Just remember, be comfortable with the difference between this and this. Be comfortable with the fact that the crocodile always eats the bigger number, whatever it is. I know for a lot of you, that's basic stuff, that's stuff you learned ages ago. But you still need to know it. You still need to be able to be comfortable with it. Be sure to remember also when you show it on the number line that it's a filled in dot means it can be equal to. A hollow dot means it can't be equal to that number. It can be equal to a number very, very slightly away from that number. But it can't be equal to that number if it's a hollow dot. Don't forget when you're solving, it's just x equals, you're doing the same as that, but this time it's x is less than or x is greater than, but you want x on its own. Don't forget also that the one rule, that if your times are dividing by a negative, you've got to make sure you flip the sign, and I've showed you a way around that. You can just add the x's to the other side, and then you don't have the negative x. Thank you very much, and if you enjoyed this video, then please check out onmaths.com for more videos, or check out the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.